Hey guys, welcome to the video. Those of you who have watched the Kamut video will know that this was right of GPS was originally going to be included in that original one. Unfortunately, it was getting ridiculously long, so I decided to split it in two. So this will be an overlook on how I use Ride with GPS. So we'll also have a quick look at Ride with GPS. You can also set up an account similar to Kamut, you just link it to your Facebook account, or you can set up an email and password. Um, once you've done that, you'll come up, this is like your, kind of like your home screen for your previous rides that you've created. And then there's some more extra functionality down here, but there's under the paid option. Again, similar to Kamut, there is a paid option, so if you click upgrade in the top right hand corner, you go premium, so $10 a month for 80 for the year, or, six, or basically $6 a month for 50 for the year. And obviously you can see here you get extra functionality using those, um, those options. To start planning your route, funny enough, you click on Route Planner at the top here, and this will bring you to your map, and that defaults to roughly where you live. So you can see I'm based in Ipswich in England. And then what you do is you just click on the map and select your start point. Uh, let me just put here for example. So that little green um, sort of triangle it simplifies. So this green little triangle signifies your start point. And then the difference between this and Kamut is that you actually build your route as you go along. So you start clicking on roads to follow then that will automatically follow those routes for you. You can see that the profile is being populated along the bottom and on the left hand side there's a queue sheet that gets populated as you add items to your route. One nice feature about Ride with GPS is you can select different maps. If we zoom out a little bit. So by default this is just a normal map, so a similar sort of map you'd find on Google. You can select different types of maps, so if you click terrain it will have the contour lines of different elevations. If you zoom in a little bit, there you go, you can see some of these contour lines so you can see what the elevation is going to be like. You go satellite, self-explanatory, hybrid is just satellite with the roads overlaid. And then what I like to have a look at, you can use Ride with GPS map. And this puts on uh, cycle routes. Or you can do OSM, which is the open source mapping. Now open source maps for those who are not familiar, is what it sounds like, it's an open source map. It's run by like a community and then anyone can actually go in and edit the map. I'm not sure exactly how you do it, I think you just have to go onto the OSM, it's actually a website, and you can edit the actual maps on there. So if you found a, if you've been out on your route, been out on your ride and you found a road that's not previously there, you can edit that on the map and that will be included for everyone right across the world. And then one of the ones that I actually use quite often is the OSM cycle. So that puts in the national, regional, local cycle routes. So you can see this red one is a cycle route. It's called cycle route one, cycle route A, A3, A2, B, etc. What I'll do in the description below, I'll put a link to the key for the map. If you click on here, so you can see the thick red lines, national cycle route, the purple one's regional, and the blue one's local. And it's got cycle paths, footpaths, etc. So it'd be quite interesting so you can understand the map a little bit better. So if we zoom into where we started, and then we can start selecting our route. So if we click here, for example, that will start planning, putting us onto this cycle route, and then you can just start clicking, and it will populate this red route here. It will just pop you, start populating the cycle route for you. And then keep on clicking. You can click on big roads, small roads, and it will just follow for you. To here, if you want to do some like a, a round route, sort of roughly back to where we where we started back into a switch. You can see, like I say, on the left hand side, this queue sheet has been populated with all the left and the right turns, and these sort of little bubbles here will tell you the right turns, the description of them, saying that's a sharp right, right, left, etc. Over on the left hand side, it will show you the distance that you're route is currently at, so this one's 31.1 miles with 901 feet of elevation. And then once you're done, you can just click save on the bottom left hand corner here. So if you click save, give it a name, click save, and that's now been saved to my route, so if we select view route, 
so you can see if we change take the OSM cycle off you've got to see it a bit easier there we go so that's our route like I say not a very good one we're going all around ourselves there but that's a, basically how you plan out a simple route on Ride with GPS and then if you want to download that to your Garmin or your Wahoo or whatever, whatever head unit you've got you can just click export TCX file just click export download TCX file and you see that downloads onto your computer and then you can drag that onto your head unit now what I've found is I've got a Garmin Edge 520 and the, it prefers TCX files and this GPX now the GPX files do work um, it's just when you're navigating with the routing capability on the head unit then some of the turns left and right turns don't work quite as well with a GPX file than they do a TCX now that might be different for different Garmin's or if you've got a Wahoo it might be completely different but just from my own personal experience using my Garmin Edge 520 um, it does prefer TCX to GPX if you want to edit this route then you can just click edit at the top here that will take you back into the route planner and then you can click you've got undo you can undo segments redo or you can clear the whole map if you wanted to one extra little thing that I do when planning out routes is to use Google Maps so say for example we were going through what are we on right Hinchham here so, so if I'm planning a route and I found a road and I think, oh, I'm not sure what type of road that is, then I'll go onto Google Maps, find the area. So we're at Hintlesham here. You can see I've already loaded it up as Hintlesham here. And I have a look at Street View just to see what the road is like. So what you can do on Street View, click on the little man on the bottom right hand corner, pick him up and then drag him and then place him on the map. So then you can see where he is here, you can expand that and you can drag him round like so. So so I'm planning my route, so this road here looks interesting. What what's the surface like? What what sort of road is it like? What can I expect if I cycle down it? Now on Street View you can have a look. So we can go along here. So we can see that it's paved. It's going through some sort of country lane by the looks of things. So it looks like a nice road to include on our route. So I would include that on my route. So like I say, just another little thing that you can have a look at. Sometimes you'll find a route, or you'll plan out a route, and you'll, you'll look on Google Maps or Google Street View and see that it might actually not be the best route for you to go down. So that's another little thing that I do, just to double check. Obviously I don't do it on every single route, that takes forever, but just on certain roads where you're not too sure, then um, that is worth having a look at. To go back onto the whole map for Street View, just click on the left hand side here. Let me zoom in a little bit. So what you can do if you pick up your man, but don't actually drop him anywhere, all the blue lines signify all the roads which have been mapped using Google Street View. So what I've found sometimes is, if you zoom in somewhere, find one here. I see one that looks like they've all been mapped. But what you can do sometimes is find a road, and if it hasn't been mapped on Google Street View, then there's a couple of things that it could be. It could be a gravel road, so it could be a really nice gravel road to go down. It could be, be through somebody's private property, so you do have to be a bit cautious about that. Um, but yeah, so it is handy just for having a look and seeing what the surface is like. Um, just seeing what the scenery, what the view is going to be like when you're cycling down. So that's another little hack that I use when planning out a route. So that's how I use Ride with GPS and Commute to plan out my routes. I hope you picked up a couple of tips and found it useful. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.